Happy Friday! Our board game demo for this month is going to be Catan. Some people also play it, say it as Catan. Uh, I'm not really sure if there is a correct way to say it, so I'm just going to say Catan. So this is a board game for two to four people. And one thing I saw that was pretty cool is that right here on the side of the box, you can scan this QR code to see a video about how to play it. So. If you are still confused after my video, you might want to check that out. As always, you can also uh, look on YouTube or other internet sites if you are confused about the rules. And of course, there is a rule book inside. Um, people have had a lot of fun playing this game, looks like. It has had a lot of use. Alright, so I have gone ahead and set everything up. I've set it up for two players. Um, what you do to set it up is first you construct the island. Uh, you're going to put these six blue pieces together first and they connect by numbers. These numbers are kind of hard to see. Um, they're written here in dark blue right on the ocean. Um, so you'll connect the three to the three, the two to the two. So you'll connect to those and then there are these 19 hexagons that go in the middle to make up the island. So if it is your first time playing, which it probably will be if you're watching this video, um, they give you a way to start. They tell you which ones to put, um, which hexagons to put, and also what numbers to put, just to make it kind of an easier to play fair game. Uh, once you get the hang of it, there are directions on how to randomize the island. Um, but you'll just follow this map, setting it up. Um, then you're going to select a color. I have orange. My opponent's going to have red. If you have more players, there's also blue and white. And in your bag, you're going to have five settlements, which look like this little house, four cities, which are these bigger pieces. And then these little rectangles are roads. You're going to have 15 of those. <clears throat> so you are going to start off um, by taking two of your settlements and two of your roads and choosing where you want to place them in the beginning. So I'll place mine here and here. And the goal of this game is to get 10 points. Um, each of these settlements is worth one point, so you're already starting the game with two points. Um, the cities are worth two points each and the settlements are worth one point each. So those are how you get points in these ga in this game. Uh, there are also special cards where you can get extra points. So whoever has the largest army is going to get two victory points. The way you get this is by playing three knight cards. <clears throat> so if you play three knight cards, you can grab this and you have two victory points. But if another player ends up getting more, so if somebody gets four, they're gonna steal this from you. Um, the longest road also gets two victory points. So if you have a road that is at least five segments long, you can grab this card for two points. Of course, if someone builds a road that's six segments long, they're gonna steal this from you as well. So those are another way to get points throughout the game. Uh, there are five different kinds of resources here. Um, if there are hills, those are going to produce brick. There are forests on the island that produce lumber. There are mountains that produce ore. There are fields that produce grain. And there are pastures that produce wool. This one in the middle is the desert. It does not produce anything. So you're going to have those five resources in their individual stacks face up. Um, then you'll also have these development cards. Um, these just give you different things to do. You might be able to get victory points with those. All right. So each person also gets a building cost card. Um, this is just kind of a cheat sheet to help you throughout the game. Um, it lets you know what you need to build a road. You need one, I'm not gonna say this correctly, one brick and one lumber. So when you have those cards in your hand, you'll need to discard them to build a road. <clears throat> if you want to build a settlement, you need one lumber, one brick, one grain, and one wool. So you'll have to discard those four to build your settlement. 
Uh, a city requires two grain and three ore. And to get a development card, you have to discard one grain, one wool, and one ore. So you don't have to memorize all that because it is on your little cheat sheet right there. Um, a city does have to replace a settlement. So you can't just build a road and a city. You have to replace it. Um, usually you only play one development card per turn. And usually you cannot play a development card on the turn you buy it. Of course, there are special exceptions to that rule and those will be written on the cards. All right, so for your turn, first you're going to roll for resource production. So there are two dice, you will roll. I rolled a seven. That is actually the special um, roll. If you roll a seven, no one receives any resources. Every player that has more than four resource cards, so these cards, in their hand has to select half of them and return them. And then you're going to move the robber and you'll want to move it somewhere where you're not because it's, it's not good. You wanna hurt the, your opponents, not yourself. You'll move the robber. <clears throat> and then you get to steal a random card from an opponent who has a settlement or city um, near the robber. So they'll hold their cards out. It's going to be random. You'll just pick one. And all right. So let me tell you what happens if you don't roll a seven. A seven is the, is the special exception with the robber. Oh my gosh. I rolled another seven. Okay. Five. So I rolled a five. Um, right now I just have my settlements and roads. So I'm going to Put my opponents out as well so you can see all right I rolled a five so <clears throat> my settlement is actually touching one of these hexagons that has a five on it um, and that is a hill so I would get a brick card Mine is also touching the other five, and it is a pasture, so I would also get a wool card. So that was a very good roll for to benefit me. Now, if I had rolled a nine, my opponent here, their settlement is touching a hexagon that has a forest, so they would get a lumber card. And the other nine, nobody has a settlement touching right now, so they wouldn't get anything. So whatever you roll, you're going to find those numbers on the board, if you have a settlement or city touching it, then you get one of those cards. All right, then you may also trade resource cards. Um, you can just ask, you can say, uh, I need a wool, I'll give you a brick, would you like to trade? They, your opponent can say no, they can say, they can you can try, try to make a deal. If you give me two brick, I'll give you a wool. So you can kind of negotiate and trade um, with your opponents. You can also choose to maritime trade, which means um, you can trade in, depending on where you are, hold on, I'm confused. Well, let me get to that section and I'll explain maritime trade. Um, then you can also build roads, cities, settlements, or divide by development cards, but remember, you have to pay for those. Um, and then you're going to go around and you're going to keep going around. Um, everybody takes their turn and it continues around until someone has 10 victory points. That is when the game ends. All right. Okay, so the maritime trade. Here's where it is. Um, so if nobody wants to trade with you, you can always trade at four to one by putting four identical resource cards back in their stack and taking any one of your choice. So if you really need a card that you are not getting, you could trade in four of the same kind for any one. It's not a great deal, but if you get really desperate, um, you might want to do it. Now, if you have a settlement that is in one of these harbors, these allow you to trade, um, different things. So if you have a settlement in this harbor here or here, you can trade two forests for any one card. If you have a settlement here or here or here, you see where the docks are going down. 
decks, um, dunks, yes. You can trade two bricks for any one card. So those are ways to trade without other players. All right, so building, of course, you have to build. That is the way you get your points. You have to build your roads, build your settlements and cities. That's how you get your points. <clears throat> All right, so only one road can be built on any path. So I have this um, orange here. The red cannot come build a road on that same path. A new road must always connect to one of your existing road settlements or cities. So I can't just decide I want to build a ro random road out here. I have to connect it. All right. Now there is a distance rule. You may only build a settlement at an intersection if all three of the adjacent intersections are vacant. So I could not build a settlement here because here are the three intersections. There's a settlement here. So you always have to be kind of two away. So I would have to build another road and then I could build a settlement there. Uh, that's the distance rule. Um, they have to connect to your roads. All right. So like I said earlier, you have to upgrade um, your settlement to get a city. You can't just put a city down. Cities produce twice as many resources as settlements though. So they're worth an extra victory point. And if I upgraded this, I would get two cards. If someone rolled a six, I would get two wheat. If someone rolled a three, I would get two ore. So it is good, but they are difficult to get because they cost a lot of cards. All right, so these are the development cards that you will buy. They never go back into the supply. You're going to keep them hidden until you use them. Um, I already told you about what happens when you roll a seven, but you can refer back here to the rule book if that happens. Um, it explains how to play these different cards and then explains how the game ends. If you have 10 or more victory points during your turn, the game ends and you are the winner. If you get 10 points, but it is not your turn, the game continues until any player has 10 points on his turn. So it has to be your turn. You have 10 points. The game is over immediately. Um, nobody gets to gets an extra turn. It's just over. Um, so if you go further along in this rule book, it has an almanac that has more details um, about all the game components and all the rules. So you'll want to have that. Um, to look at as you're playing the game if you have questions. Um, and then on the back is a game overview, um, which I think I've told you pretty much all of the basics that you need to know. Um, so this is the pretty fun game. This is one of the um, kind of classic modern board games. Uh, we talked about it recently in our board game trivia on Facebook Live. Um, and some people love it. Some people hate it. Um, I personally do like it, so you should definitely try it out. Come check it out if you have not played it before and have fun.